be strange because we've had 16 years of education. But I want to ask a different perspective to you. As educators, the front line in education is going to be what Arpan is doing, material science. It's going to be setting up a thousand GPUs so that the students can actually experiment with LLM models. Are we seeing institutes do this kind of investment or is it simply make a classroom, put a projector, uh, get a teacher and hope for the best? Uh, no, uh, in fact, higher education has moved way beyond chalk and talk or even smart boards. Today, the national education policy also focuses a lot on providing skill based education. However, the challenge in front of universities today or in front of higher education institutions, in fact, is investment. Where do we get the funding to provide such skill based education from? So the requirement is now twofold. One is that we need support from not just the government, but also from the industry. And that is because we need to provide this education to the students who are the leaders of tomorrow. If you want Arpan's company to do well, on one hand, yes, we just now talked a lot about lithium, about the batteries, about the material sciences. What about the people who will do all this? You need to have skilled labor in the economy and to provide that, I feel the academic institutions need to buck up and provide that kind of support to our students who are, of course, the leaders of tomorrow. Okay, but, but are you seeing that, this happen? We need because... to establish, uh, if I can just take yeah, 10 please, seconds. Please, please, please finish. Uh, we need to establish centers of excellence, especially that was going to be my question. areas. Yeah like artificial intelligence or the drone technology or space technology that we are talking about. So, okay, that so in the, in the biggest self-interest of the biggest industrialist, okay, so if you are geo, all right, you already have the megahertz spectrum, you've got the apps, you've got the content, you've got the retail store, but you also want to make your own phone, why not, okay, not buy it from China. You also want to make your own 6G equipment. You got to design it. You got to design the chips that are going to communicate at the high rates of space that 6G operates. So do you then go to MIT University in Pune, okay, which is, which is actually a genuine bona fide. Uh, they do exchange programs with, with the guys in the US. Okay. So do you go there and say, I am going to make a center of excellence for communication technologies. I'm going to give you $100 million. And then the pool that you graduate every year, those are the people are higher, right? Is that happening, Dr. Anjali, where these guys are not going not to give donation, not philanthropy? I'm not saying, oh, it's my, I was an alumni of this, of this college. So I'm going back and sir, I will, aapko, aapke das, you plant 10 trees in my name. And aap mujhse ek le le je. Not that. I'm talking about people who want to invest with a self-interest. Yeah, this, this labor is going to be ours. Are we seeing that happening? Yes, we are definitely seeing a change where the industry now wants to give back to the academia. And we do have alumni who are coming back and helping us in setting up centers of excellence. If I speak about my own institution at MIT World Peace University, we do have a center of excellence in artificial intelligence, which is set up with the support of our alumni, of course. And they are providing, the center, of course, is providing a lot of education in the domains which are in the current uh, demand in the economy. Especially when I speak about, I mean, there's a lot of conversation going out, up, going on about space technology. I'm very happy to share with all of you that recently the satellite which was launched did carry a payload from the MIT World Peace University, which was developed by our students by themselves. Yeah, and we, we interviewed in, those kids. Yes, I, I remember. Yes. yes, yes. So it was a very proud moment where we are actually. Okay, but, but ma'am, but ma'am, I'm uh, the problem I'm seeing, and I, you know, I, I. I take a lot of interest in these things. So the problem I'm seeing is that when we say center of excellence in artificial intelligence, we mean a room and a computer. Okay. Are we talking that we have a server set up with, you know, the, with, with, with 100 GPUs capable of processing some LLMs? Are we realistically talking, talking that? We are moving in that direction. But as I said, we need support from the industry for that because academia by itself will not be able to provide that kind of funding 
only from the fees that we are able to generate as revenue. Yes. For, for that, we need support and not just from the government because we are relying even on private investment from the industry. Government can, of course, provide support in the form of tax rebates to the industries which are providing this kind of support to academia. Okay, so, th so then th so this, this, is my, this is my question, right? What you need is a philanthropist, people out there watching this this podcast. You need to go to the universities and not give them a room and a pankha. Okay, you need to give them. A, I'm going to give you a hundred fifty ninety Nvidia GPUs. All right, and I'm going to get you somebody who's going to tell you how to use them. Now you need muscle power of the hardware to get this done. Okay, because that's what the future is, right? The LLM learning models and how they are adapted is human intervention we are designing them okay we are teaching computers how to learn themselves like like teaching children how to learn themselves but after that it's the muscle power of the gpu that has to run those models into the into the trillions of computations that is just the gpu so don't go set up a building provide this infrastructure so now let me put that thought to arpan from a different perspective okay arpan now when you are going and hiring people right there will be traditional sets of mechanical engineers chemical engineers electrical engineers okay how many people are coming out with the particular skill set that you require or are you basically trying to hire them and then you have to teach them what needs to get done so the model that we are working on is we have uh, ties with a lot of colleges where we go and uh, uh, you know we hire uh, we get interns we tell them you're going to be serious for next six months we going to hire you at this x value which will be more than the market so that is where you generate interest but right out of the college you are not getting mindset who will just come and start working on the drone technology because uh, you know what is being taught versus what is required as per the industry standards there's still a very big gap and as you know being in the industry you would require more people to work so you'll have to bridge that gap by you know teaching people how to, uh, what to learn okay. what to unlearn and you know, Learning and unlearning is a big process that goes into when you want to hire people in the drone sector or in this, you know, this space tech. Okay, so okay, so now okay, I'm just gonna give give a thought experiment and Arpan help me out here. A thought experiment. I'm gonna wish you very well and I'm gonna wish that you become that billion dollar, ten billion dollar company because the potential is there. If you get it right, uh, the market is there. It's it's inevitable that this is going to happen in the next ten years. Okay, so let's say you become the unicorn, right? And now you have money. And you want to invest in the ecosystem of, of human resource in this country. And we take you to the IIT Delhi campus. What is it that you would want to build there in terms of learning, a center of excellence in drones? What would you want to see them doing? The first thing that I want to do is basically what is there in the industry, make that available so that whatever is happening, they already have it. And now from there, they have to build it. Above and how to how you can make a system better, faster, stronger. How you can reduce the power, how you can increase the power, reduce the area means the size, and you know how it, you, the speeds are going up. So these are the actual areas that we want to work in, and we want to help a lot of institutes, not just IITs. There are other institutes that we work with, and uh, we want to give them the money, the right platform, so that you know this eventually where the, the industry and academy work hand in glove. Things will go for okay. a better. So, kind of what you're going to have to do, Arpan, when we become a unicorn, okay, is go to and don't go to IIT, okay, go to some other some other college, right? Everybody just goes to IIT. Go to some other college and tell them, I am going to help you set up a facility in which you can actually make your carbon fiber and mold it, okay? I'm going to actually get you the 3D printers in which you can do metal printing, aluminium printing, type, you know, other kinds of metal uh, printing. I'm going to get you the CNC machines. Uh, this is the stuff that the colleges need. It's not a camera with a fan. Okay, this is the stuff that is required, right? Then you need the computing power, just the computing power to test because I promise you, even in Arpan's industry, a large part of the even the testing is not going to be a guy sitting in a field with a remote control. It's going to be virtual simulated testing of models of airfoils. Okay, uh, uh, you know of uh, uh, of avionics. So all of this is going to be simulated testing. Computers will produce simulations to test the product. This is going to be hard compute power. So do. If you can think about it, go to the university near you and give them a bank of GPUs, guys. Okay, that's what Trump and Nadella and and 
and Sam are doing. Okay. And if you think that the Chinese have done some miracle, guess they just they have not. Okay. <laughs> the miracle tells you that the Communist Party is the best thing uh, in the world. That's what Deep Six says. Okay. Now hang a second. We run high tech. Let me come to the basics because there is a truism uh, that was started at the beginning of this conversation uh, by Bhavesh Kothari that you guys can discuss your drones and discuss everything. For the vast majority of us, the single biggest asset we have is our house. Uh, it's the truth. So Bhavesh Kothari, for many, many years, real estate was a headache in this country because there was a bubble. Too many projects not getting completed, people getting stuck, then we are in RERA and then this and that. Is that problem over? Can we hear him? PCR? Hello, can yeah, you hear me? Go ahead, yes. Perfect. Yes. Uh, so, Rishabh, exactly after RERA is where the confidence in under construction properties have come in. Under construction is the only way to invest in real estate and make money. Thank you to the government that after RERA, I am able to give confidence to my buyers that, sir, this project is RERA approved. You don't need to worry because government takes care of everything else in case there's a delay, in case there's a legal issue in the problem. None of those things were problem. I mean, uh, pre RERA, people would invest in land and they'll figure out, oh, land is stuck in litigation. Projects are not getting completed for 50, 15 years and they've paid the entire money. All those problems have gone. Now, real estate is a major investment uh, for a lot of people in middle class to build a wealth. I mean, all the panelists over here, you, yourself, me, uh, whoever is watching has a real estate investment. They may not have investment in gold or stocks, equities, right? It's building us wealthier as the country is growing. So as you're talking about the GDP growing, it increases the real estate value, the real estate portfolio increases. Today, if invest, somebody invested one crore uh, by taking a 50 lakh loan and 50 lakh of their own savings, it'll, it's going to become two, two and a half, three crores in few years down the line, depending on how good the GDP grows. And that is where your next generation, what you pass on is a three crore of wealth, not just for 50 lakh, because you had 50 lakh and you made three crore out of it. You can use leverage uh, you know, in real estate, which you cannot use anywhere else. So real estate is very, very important and government needs to focus on uh, real estate as okay, a sector. So, so, to, okay, yeah. so a couple of questions. When right. we are saying it's important, okay, there'll be people who want to buy a house to live in. Then there'll be right. people who want to buy a house to flip. Then there'll be right. people who want to buy a house for long-term rental. Right. All of these things, uh, every all of these things make up the market, right? So right. where is the market now? Are we seeing, is it still that, okay, the biggest buck is to be made in Bombay and Delhi, which are really big real estate markets in Bombay? I mean, one BHK is, is crazy amounts of money. Or are right. we seeing it happen in Lucknow and Priyagaraj and all the other places? It, it has gone to multiple cities. So today you see the top developers of India, Gautri, etc. They are going to places like Lucknow, Indore, Surat, Jaipur. Now this is, uh, you know, the tie to cities is where a lot of demand for real estate is. And per square feet trade in these cities have touched eight to 9,000 rupees a square feet, right? Which was which used to be 4,000 rupees a square feet. So of course, there's a lot of demand in these cities. There's a lot of development happening in these cities. The infrastructure, the government, which is the, the infrastructure development, which is happening uh, thanks to government is helping these cities grow and is helping the real estate grow and in turn it's helping people grow their own wealth by investing in real estate because real estate is land at the end of it you call it apartments you call it office spaces uh, uh villas whatever but it is land and land is scarce it will grow today a land which is thousand uh, rupees a square feet will become ten thousand in few years it may take five years ten years i don't know but it is bound to become that's how history has been okay, how does it so, pan yes. out in in high rises because if i buy an apartment in a high rise uh, mm -hmm. and uh, i mean it's not a plot of land. So in 20 yeah. years down, 30 years down the line, 40 years down the line, how does it become a generational opportunity? Because I have a plot mm -hmm. of land, it's a generational opportunity. I can do yes. whatever I want with it. I can't yes. break down a high rise unless everybody agrees. So how is that a generational opportunity? So Shib, a plot of land, you cannot buy on your own. The developer will buy and build high rise building because he's there to pay much more money for an acre of yeah, land. Yeah. In but I get it. Like I say, if I own a house and a plot of land, I get it, right? I can hand it over right. to my children. But I yeah. own a, if I own a, an apartment, right? And the apartment mm -hmm. building, who knows what the state of the building will be in 40 years from now, right? Uh, so, so how do we how do we look at look that at, as an investment? Uh, look at Bombay. Then there's a redevelopment happening. So land, you get undivided share with every apartment building also, right? So if it's a uh, one acre of land and there are 20 apartments on that, each of them, as government rule, gets an undivided share, which is 20 percent, 5 percent, 7 percent, based on uh, your papers, the land share in that. So when it goes in the redevelopment, you're still passing it on. However, we tell everyone to buy from renowned developers because quality nobody compromises nowadays for the brand in in renowned developers. So you have the best developers out there. 
who have given who are giving qualities for 50 60 years nothing is going to happen to those buildings right uh, we've seen building i'm staying in a building which is 25 year old and uh, you know it's amazing right so uh, now these things are a problem anymore but uh, you have to sell it at certain point of time also okay. if it's an All right. apartment. Okay, right? couple of questions. Yeah. I need to take a, take a break. Okay, and I want to leave a last word with Tarun as well. So, a couple of questions. Uh, when we go abroad, right, we see houses available, fine. 